We're now within a week of the bar exam, and I know this is a time when there's a great deal of intensity and probably some anxiety for many of you as well. I also know your time is precious right now, so I'm going to keep my comments brief and to the point. For most of you, this is the weekend in which you do the last touch-up of what you're studying. I would encourage you, as I've been saying all along, to work on your weaknesses, to study there, to take the things that you feel least comfortable with and focus on that, not trying to do a survey of all the material. The tendency, the human nature, is to want to stay in your comfort zone right now, but you're going to get the most value out of working where you feel least comfortable. So if you're not a good writer, spend time writing. If there's a part of a subject, whether it's the hearsay exceptions in evidence or it's something in property, why is it always property? Go to that subject, spend time in that part of the subject, but don't try to learn the entire subject again. It's not necessary. For those of you that are photo readers, photo read all of your outlines, look at your mind maps, but then zero in on the things that you really need to work on. Sometimes this is like birds on a wire. You pick off one item at a time, one thing after another. I would encourage you to not try and study all of anything. Don't try to redo the bar review course a second or a third or God forbid a fourth time over this last weekend. The goal here is not to become similar to a refugee from the haunted mansion when you arrive at the bar exam next week. They're the ones that sit outside the door into the testing center and they've got their books usually from the uh, big box bar review, frantically outlining and underlining and making notes as though somehow that's going to make a difference. And here's the sad truth, it won't. So really it becomes a matter of holding on to your emotional stability. And we've given you some tools to do that, things like the five minute drop in and the circle of excellence and the new behavior generator. There are ways that you can do that and certainly we want you to be in that calm, quiet space. Now I mentioned the Haunted Mansion and for anyone who's a Disney fan, you know immediately what I'm talking about. But at Disney World and at the Disneyland, there was another ride that I really enjoyed for many years. It was called Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Do you remember it? I called it Test Track for Cowards. It was a great ride when you had little kids because they were thrilled at all the twists and turns and the crazy things that happened when you were in your Mr. Toad car and you're going along the, the track and there are all these things popping out at you and just crazy stuff. Essentially, the storyline is that Mr. Toad gets behind the wheel and starts driving, but Mr. Toad is completely immature, has no idea what he's doing, and it's crazy. Mr. Toad was essentially a child. Totally irresponsible, crazy, manic, sound familiar? And whatever got in his face, he just reacted to it. He had zero emotional maturity, which makes for a really fun ride at Disney. You'd twist and turn and curve and scream, and suddenly you were in the middle of the cow field, and the next thing you knew, and this is why I love Disney, you're in hell. Now, how they did that, how they managed to get all those sweet little children and their parents into the middle of hell is beyond me. But in any event, it was a really interesting metaphor for who was behind the wheel. Now, I think of that metaphor when I get to this stage of the study, because frankly, some of the students that we deal with right now are Mr. Toads, and that's what I think of them as. They're emotionally immature. They're great people. I love them. They're wonderful, but they're totally freaked out. They're panicked. And the question is, would you want to ride in a car with any of those people right now? And so the question I sometimes have to ask these folks when they're in the middle of a manic breakdown is, would you hire yourself as an attorney if you could see the way you're behaving right at this moment? It's usually followed by a fairly lengthy pause, a deep breath, a sucking sound, an occasional held back sob. And then the answer is, no, I guess I would. You see, part of what the bar exam tests is not just how much law you know, but also how well you handle yourself emotionally. What's your level of emotional maturity? This is part of what being a lawyer requires. Do we think that the bar examiners are totally unaware that this is a high stakes, high pressure exam, and somehow their goal is to make you a happy, smiling person for those days that you're in the testing room? Oh, come on. Part of what's being tested, obviously, in this setting is can you handle pressure? Can you handle stress? Can you imagine, for example, showing up to represent your client in court and saying, oh, I'm so freaked out. I'm so nervous. I don't know what to do. How am I ever going to stand in front of the judge? What am I going to say? How am I going to? That is going to happen. Even if you feel that way, it just isn't going to happen. Part of being a lawyer, part of being a counselor at law is having emotional maturity. Now, I'm not saying that you have to be the ice man or that you have nerves of steel and nothing gets to you. Of course it does, and of course it will. But the point is that the profession that we've chosen is one that puts a high value on being able to control your emotions, to be objective, left-brained, thoughtful, and aware of your client's needs first. Now, the right side of your brain is the one that's feeding you the information. It's your non-conscious brain. You need to be quiet enough on the left side of your brain that you can hear what's coming from the right side of your brain. And if you can't do that on a bar exam, frankly, it's going to be tough for you to practice law as a lawyer. 
And I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm just pointing out the reality that the bar exam is not the end of the road. It's the beginning of your career in law. So you might as well get used to having to be that way. Now, I suggest that you actually dress for court when you go to take the bar exam. And that is heresy, right? Shouldn't you be comfortable and wear your pinks and your flip-flops and just be as comfortable as you can be in layers? I understand that. But here's the thing. You're going to practice law wearing a suit or your go-to-court clothes and your heels and your shoes and your tie and all of those pieces. Taking the bar exam should be going to work. It's part of what you do. And I think it's a great tool to go to the bar exam dressed like you're going to court. It will freak out everyone around you for sure. But it will also set a tone of emotional maturity for you that says, I'm in control of this process, not someone else. Most of the people that I talk to when I ask about being a lawyer and being like a lawyer, having the emotional maturity of a lawyer, at that point, they tend to gather themselves up and realize, I don't need to freak out about this. It's not necessary. It's not very flattering to me. It's not something I would want my clients or friends to see. And I can handle this. I can take the exam and I can be emotionally stable. And that's the goal this weekend. I know that many of you think the goal this weekend is to learn another outline, to memorize another rule, to figure out another answer to a question. Those are all interesting things to do. I actually think the goal of the final weekend before the exam is to reach emotional stability. It's to have yourself in a position where you're ready and excited to go and take the exam, to show what you can do, to express your skills. Think about Mr. Toad and his wild ride. It literally ends up in hell. That's where the ride ends up. Not a good place. If Mr. Toad had been stable and mature and calm, he wouldn't have missed that turn off the road. He wouldn't have driven off the side of the cliff. And some of you are driving off the side of the cliff, either consciously or unconsciously. But take a moment right now and think, what am I doing? What kind of an image am I projecting to the rest of the world? Am I being stressed out because I think it's the expectation that people expect of me as someone taking the bar to be freaked out that I should be behaving this way? I got a student to sent me a great note a few years ago. They said a coworker came up to them in the week before the bar and said, aren't you taking the bar exam next week? And they said, yeah, I am. And they said, well, that's really strange. You don't seem to be crazed and freaked out and flipped out. And the student said, no, I guess I'm not. I didn't realize I was supposed to. And the coworker said, that's a really interesting idea. Now that person went on and passed the bar exam. That was no surprise to me. And typically when I look at who's going to be successful on the exam, I can almost tell just by the level of emotional maturity how someone's more likely to do. The people that are emotionally stable right now tend to have better results on the exam than the people that are panicked and freaked out and trying to scramble at the very end. That's just the reality. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't work hard this weekend, but you should work with a sense of positive expectancy. If you can stay calm when everyone else is freaking out, when you can avoid the drama of the exam, when you can see the people sitting at the doorway to the exam still going through their flashcards and highlighting, doing things that won't change any result, you can just be quietly humming along, ready to go. So I tell my students, take a set of earphones and tuck them into your pocket, not into any device, but just have them in your ear. So when somebody walks up to you, you can avoid the drama by just going and stay out of it. Stay out of the drama this weekend. Stay out of the drama at the exam. Really do whatever it takes for you to stay calm and focused. Step into the circle of excellence. Use the five-minute drop-in. Use your paraliminal recordings. Quiet your mind. If you can do those things, you're going to be so much better off. And if you dress like you're going to court, if you smile and you're happy and you're calm, it's going to drive people crazy. Smile at the proctors. Smile at the trooper from Florida who's at the gate to the doorway of the exam with his guns, like somehow you're going to be the one storming the room. Smile at the other bar takers who are freaking out. It drives them nuts and you can laugh at the inside joke. You're not Mr. Toad. Let them be that guy. You know exactly where you're going, the road that's going to get you there, and you'll do great.